And if you're watching this and you're going on a cruise ship, you're probably having a panic attack right now because you're like, oh my God, oh my God, all of this stuff is awful about going on a cruise ship. Like, what have I done? Hey sailors, welcome back to Cruising as Crew. My name is Lucy. And today we're gonna talk about why crew members depart early from their cruise ship contract. But before we start, I am taking video suggestions, so you can either leave it down in the comments, or if you have a video suggestion, you can message me on Instagram, uh, cruising as crew, but I'm more likely to see it if you put it down in the comments, and also it helps me out, so you know. Uh, but yeah, I would love to know what you wanna see, and yeah, let's get into it. So embarking on your cruise ship career is gonna be thrilling, you are bound to encounter wonderful people, visit beautiful destinations, but it is not for the faint-hearted because as I have been over in my many other videos, <laughs> it's work hard, play hard. The learning curve is steep, the hours along the self-improvement is difficult and it's going to happen, you have no choice. The thing is, when most people make a huge life shift, they typically focus on one aspect at a time. You either get a new job, you either get a new group of friends, you move house. But going to work on a cruise ship means you are going to tackle multiple transitions simultaneously. While starting a new job on land allows you to return home to your friends and family, working on a cruise ship means you are uprooting your entire life at once. You leave your hometown, you leave your house, you leave your friends, you leave your loved ones behind to go and travel the world on a ship. I would say it takes about two months, six weeks to two months, for you to really start enjoying the experience. It took me two months when I went on my first cruise ship and actually I considered booking my flight home multiple times. There were many days where I was like, what the hell? have I done? But the only reason, and I'll tell you, the only reason I didn't book a flight home was because I was in Australia. The ship I was working on was in Australia. I couldn't afford to book a flight home because, you know, Australia to England, you're looking at £1,500 for a flight. The ship I was on, however, was going over to Europe for the summer. So I said to myself, I'm going to stick it out while we're in Australia because I have no choice. And if I still feel the same, when I get to Europe, then I'll book a flight home. But luckily, by the time we got to Europe, I was absolutely loving it. I actually, I started loving it before we got to Europe, so it all worked out. But the point is, that first month to two months on board, you are going to question every decision you've made. You are gonna think, what have I done? This is too much. This is overwhelming, I don't know anyone, I'm working every hour God sends, my feet hurt, I maybe hate my manager. Like, it's going to be difficult, but you just have to give yourself time to settle in and start enjoying the experience. But this is where you get really good at self-soothing and learning to rely on yourself, which, let me tell you, it's a difficult skill to learn, but oh my God, does it improve your overall quality of life. Being able to just rely on yourself and like I said, self-soothe, it is the best skill that I have learnt while working on a cruise ship. It is invaluable. If you have a bad day, you can't go home to your mom. You might not even be able to call your mom because of the time difference, the crappy internet because you're on a cruise ship. So you do have to be able to talk yourself down and calm yourself down after you've had like a bad experience at work or with a colleague or something. But after a few weeks, a few months, most people find their footing. You know, you make some friends, you become more familiar with your surroundings, like you can actually find your way around the ship. You get to know your cabin mate a little bit more. Like everything just becomes normal and it's actually surprising how fast you adapt. But once you do adapt and it becomes your new normal, that's when people really start to like get in the groove and start to enjoy it. But that's not what we're talking about today. Sorry about the tangent. We are talking about the people who don't get used to it. You know, after a few weeks or a few months, they're like, no, I still hate this. Why though? Why? Well, first reason is the rules. There are 
a lot of rules that you need to follow when you work on board a cruise ship, such as, as a crew member, depending on your rank, you may not be allowed in certain areas of the ship, either at certain times or at all. And obviously, people are like, this is crazy. And depending on what cruise line you're on, you might not be able to go in passenger areas unless you're working. So obviously Virgin Voyages, for example, any crew member is pretty much allowed in any area of the cruise ship at most times. If you go on a ship like Seabourn or Cunard, you ain't allowed in passenger areas unless you're working, which means that if you have time off, you are only allowed to be in crew areas. And this obviously can feel incredibly restrictive. So the rules can make people feel a little bit claustrophobic. And the thing is, because you're on a cruise ship and there's cameras everywhere. Now, it's not like people are watching you, but if you try and break a rule, people are going to see, if that makes sense. So it's like Big Brother being on a cruise ship. And although... For some people, like myself, it was never really a problem. I understand that for some people, they're like, this is just too much. Like, I can't escape the rules. I, I don't feel like I can just live my life because there's so many things I have to abide by. And some rules make sense. Like, you know, crew members aren't allowed in the passenger gym unless it's empty. Crew members are only allowed in the pool if there's, I think, like five passengers or less in there. That makes sense because it's about the guest experience but then there's some rules like crew members aren't allowed to wear flip-flops on the i-95 and i get it there's forklifts on the i-95 there's always a chance that you know someone could run over your foot and cut your toes off but realistically i don't even want to say realistically because it could happen but like it's very unlikely so it is really annoying if you forget to put shoes on and you start walking to the mess with open-toed sandals on and an officer comes up to you and tells you to go back to your cabin and put different shoes on and then it's like you know like things like that really get under your skin it's not necessarily the big rules that annoy crew members because obviously we can all make sense of those it's the rules like the open-toed shoes on the i-95 not being able to have tattoos exposed not being able to wear denim in certain like passenger areas it's it's those little things that tend to drive crew members absolutely nuts crew members go home early because they have left a boyfriend or girlfriend at home they've got a relationship and they decided to go ahead and go for their dream of working on a cruise ship even though they have a relationship at home but I think sometimes, as we've said, because the first few weeks on board a cruise ship are going to be difficult. You st especially if you've got a boyfriend at home or a girlfriend, you start to think like, why have I potentially sacrificed my amazing relationship for this? Because as I said, it only gets good if you stick it out. And if you, a lot of people just don't stick it out because they can't see the light at the end of the tunnel and they're like, well, if I have to choose between this and my relationship, I'm going to choose my relationship. So they go home. And I'm not saying that's the wrong decision. Like everyone needs to do what they need to do. This girl, like she was debating whether to go home for her boyfriend or stay on board. And I was like, stay on board. I promise you, like, it's going to get good. Because she was really on the fence. Like, obviously, if she was like, I hate this. She went home, I think her and her boyfriend parted ways a year or so later, and now she's working on cruise ships. So, it obviously, it all worked out for the end. She had to, that was her journey, whatever. But people do go home for their relationship. And I can, I understand this, I really do. But I believe that if your relationship is right it will be there when you get back to be in a relationship you have to be good on your own you know like you like even if you're in a relationship you're still two individual people with dreams and goals that are separate of each other and I think that can sometimes be an issue when you get in a relationship you, like you mold too much together but anyway I'm not a relationship expert I'm definitely not a relationship expert so moving on the long hours, I mean, this was inevitable, right? The long hours are definitely a big reason why people go home. They just can't hack it. Mostly people from like Western countries are the people that can't hack it. It's a real, it's a shock to the system. Whereas 
you know, like my friends who are from India, they're like, well, I would work this much. If I worked in India, I'd work this much and I'd earn less money. So that's just an example. Whereas from like people from the UK, for example, 14 hour days aren't really the norm. So to go on a cruise ship and work, well, 12 hours, if you consider your two hour breaks, to work 12 hour shifts every day, it is a shot to the system. So some people are like, this is ridiculous and I don't want to work this much, which is completely understandable. But the payoff comes in when you do get time off. And even if you don't get a day off, which you probably won't, but if you get a morning off, you're in Dubrovnik, you're in Miami, you're in the Bahamas, you're in Aruba. Yeah, if I worked at home, I'd get a weekend off. But I'd spend that weekend food shopping, meal prepping, cleaning a house. Yes, I would see my friends and do things I love, but it's not as exciting as exploring a brand new country, a brand new city. So as I said in the beginning, it's a work hard, play hard thing. You know, you are going to work really hard, but when you have time off, you're gonna be in an incredible destination with hopefully some amazing people. And it really is just a great experience, but, Long hours is one of the reasons that people are like, I'm out, this is not for me. Another reason is seasickness. Now this isn't very common. It's probably the least common actually because cruise ships are so big that you barely feel the waves. If obviously you're in a storm, then yeah, you're gonna feel it. But as a general rule, you don't really feel the ship rocking too much. My only experience of this was on my first contract when I worked in the spa on Rhapsody of the Seas one of the girls started her cruise ship contract and it just turned out that she was incredibly seasick all the time. She came to work every morning and an hour into her shift she was green and the manager had to like give her some time off because she was actually like vomiting and you could see she was ill with it and this went on for about two weeks and she was like, well, I can't do, I can't work. I can't do this because I'm vomiting every single day. Honestly, it was poor girl, it was awful. So she obviously went home. She was really, you know, upset because obviously there's a lot of effort and money that goes into getting a job on a cruise ship. So it really is, well, it must be devastating if you have to go home because you're seasick every day. You know, you don't even want to go home but your body is literally like, oh no, 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 we need to go home. But that was the only time I've ever witnessed someone go home prematurely because they were incredibly seasick. Homesickness is also a big one. Now it's a little bit weird. I know everyone, everyone is different, right? Me personally, for the first few weeks when you get on a cruise ship, I don't feel homesick because there's so much to take in. Like I'm learning the layout of the ship, I'm learning the job that I'm doing, I'm meeting new people, I'm on my A game, like, you know, you're trying to make a really good first impression with everyone you meet. So my brain is already at 100% capacity. Like I don't have time to think about home, like honestly. But when there's like a transition period between when you start to get used to ship life, but it's not quite comfortable yet. There's a few weeks there that you feel really homesick because you haven't made any like really good friends yet, but life on board is becoming more normal. So you have brain space to think about back home. And that is where people usually Bail. they go home and again this is not wrong this is not right everyone is different everyone is on their own path but it is usually in those like two to three weeks just before ship life gets really good that people are like oh my god I miss my mom I miss my friends I miss my house I miss you know just normal life so homesickness is definitely a reason that people go and then the last one is they just don't like living on a cruise ship. All of the reasons we've just mentioned can be encompassed in this one thing. You know, but there's also the logistics of like, you're living in a cabin, your cruise ship is air conditioned. So unless you go outside on the upper decks, you don't actually get fresh air. So you are in recycled air a lot of the time, most of the time. The Wi-Fi isn't great. And obviously we're in a world now where pretty much anywhere you go, you get good Wi-Fi. 
apart from a cruise ship. You can even get Wi-Fi on a plane now. So cruise ships really need to catch up. You know, the food that you eat in, in the mess, like some people, if they're, um, I don't, you know what? I don't even want to say picky with food because like I'm really not a fussy eater. I love food. But the food on Harmony was genuinely like atrocious. It was the worst food I've ever, ever had. So, so basically some cruise ships, the food is just shit. And obviously you are what you eat. So if you're eating shit food, it's going to affect how you feel. And if you're watching this and you're going on a cruise ship, you're probably having a panic attack right now because you're like, oh my God. Oh my God, all of this stuff is awful about going on a cruise ship. Like, what have I done? So this stuff can be challenging. I've worked on ships for 10 years. The people you meet, the places you go, the growth that you will have, the experiences, the cultures that you will be immersed in, like all of that outweighs everything I've just mentioned. For some people, obviously for some, they you know they go home, but for the majority of people, the good stuff outweighs the bad. So if you are going on a cruise ship, please just remember you need to give it time. You need to be patient with yourself with and with everything. You are having to cope with multiple things at once. It's completely okay that you're not going to be okay with it at first, but in time, you will be. But anyway, I really hope you have enjoyed this video. If you have, then click the like button and let me know if you've got any questions, leave them in the comments, but also if there's anything, uh, like a video that you want me to make, any topics you want me to cover, please leave that in the comments as well. Or you can DM me over on Instagram at Cruising as Crew. But I hope you have a fantastic rest of the day. And as always, I will see you in the